Well, welcome to SML, to our online service. It's such a joy that we can be together again. And I just want to thank you for your prayers for me and for the healing of my eye, which is doing really well. Um, but it is lovely to be back and to um, for us to gather together. And I do hope, we do hope that you are keeping well. It is a hard time, isn't it, at the moment? And there's so much going on around us and maybe there's so much going on within us. And I do pray you would know the Lord's peace and just an encouragement, keep close to him, allow him to give you his peace and keep rejoicing. You know, let's, even in these circumstances, let's rejoice and look to our heavenly father um, in this time. Yeah, a warm welcome from me as well. And um, we're continuing our series on Jesus' early years today, and Mark will be speaking about Revelation. Uh, we look forward to that. And a reminder too about our Lent courses that we're offering. So watch this video now. We would love you to join us as individuals or as life groups for one of our three Lent courses this year. We're running three quite different courses over Zoom, and so hope that there will be something that appeals to everyone. The Mission Shaped Living course will build spiritual practices, vision, hope and confidence into your life so that sharing God's love with others becomes a joy and not a burden. Rachel's running this course over eight Tuesdays starting on February the 9th. The prayer course is an eight week journey through the Lord's Prayer that will help you and your community to grow and deepen your prayer life. This starts on Wednesday 10th of February and will be led by Kate. Thirdly, Andy will be running the Living in Love and Faith course for the five Tuesdays in March. This course sets out to inspire people to think more deeply about what it means to be human and to live in love and faith with one another and will explore tough questions about practices of gender, sexuality and marriage in today's society. For more information or to register, please visit our website. So yeah, they look great, don't they? I already know which one I'm gonna sign up to for, for this Lent. But let's, as we go into this time of worship now, let's, um, let's steady ourselves. And as we come before him, let's pause. And Lord, we just thank you for your presence. Lord, thank, thank you that you are with each one of us now. And Lord, I pray um, at the start of the service, Holy Spirit, would you come? Would you come and fill each one of us? Lord, would you lift us up? Would you, would you lift our eyes to see you? And Lord, we're open to receive all that you long to give us through this service. And we ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You are good, you are good, when there's nothing good in me. You are love, you are love, on display for all to see. You are light, you are light, when the darkness closes in. You are hope, you are hope, you have covered all my sin. You cover me, Lord. You are peace, you are peace when my fear is crippling. You are true, you are true, even in my wandering. You are joy, you are joy, you're the reason that I sing. You are life, you are life, and your death has lost its sting. And oh, I'm running to your arms, I'm running to your arms, the riches of your love will always be enough, nothing compares to your embrace, light of the world forever reign. 
was devoted like a ring of solid gold like a vow that is tested like a covenant of old your love is enduring through the winter rain and beyond the horizon with mercy for today faithful you have been and faithful you will be you pledge yourself to me and it's why i sing your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my When we both read the passage, today's passage, uh, Julie and I, we, we both felt led by the Spirit to pray for different aspects uh, of things this morning. So we're just going to pray as the Spirit leads us individually on this. And I'm going to start. <laughs> Lord, as I prayed um, and looked at the verse about your son Jesus going into the temple age 12, and the sermon about Revelation. And before you went into the temple at 12, Jesus, you you were presented at the temple as a baby and Simeon and Anna both recognized you 
for who you were. And they had a revelation of knowing that you were the Messiah. And Father, even even your parents, Mary and Joseph, didn't really understand when you said, I'm in my father's house. Why are you looking for me anywhere else? And Lord, I just today want to um, lead everyone watching in prayer about those who have never had a revelation of who you are, Lord, and both Jew and Gentile. And Father, as we are ha ha having a day of prayer tomorrow, which will be already be done by Sunday, but I just thank you, Lord, that there are certain people that really are wanting this nation to have a revelation of you. And uh, at this really difficult time that we've had, Father, I just pray for your spirit to move across this nation and for you to bring about salvation through revelation, through your Holy Spirit, to reveal to people who you are, why you came why you died, mm -hmm. and how, Lord, you can change lives, even today, as you did then. You can do it now, and you do do it. And we thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us. And I just ask you, Father, to bring revelation to all the unsaved in mm -hmm. Britain and throughout the world, Lord, and to protect your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And Lord, I just want to lift all of us who are believers, who do know you and, and like Jesus, like the 12 year old Jesus was wanting to spend time with you in your house. Lord, I pray we would be people who would seek you earnestly, who would want to be about the father's business, who would want to be in your presence, in your house daily. And in this time of lockdown when we're kind of confined to our own houses, um, that's not a problem to you, Lord. You can break in and we, we pray that we would be people who would be seeking you daily earnestly in every possible way we'd be a people of prayer we'd be a people of worship and we'd be a, a people of action reaching out to to others at this time Lord, we pray for those who are fearful those who are lonely again Lord, we pray you would break in and you would comfort those and they would seek you and they would find you at this time so help us lord to be people who really seek after you hunger after you show us how to do that give us the ability the patience, the time, the inclination to really go after you, Lord, in this time and be a people united. And we, we lift all those who are doing Alpha starting on Monday, not just at SML, but all around this nation. Lord, we just pray again for your Holy Spirit to be in every home, every person who's taking part in the Alpha course, and you would... You would touch them, you would touch lives and you would save people. You would bring people into your kingdom for your glory. And in your name, Jesus, we pray all of this. Amen. Amen. Today's reading is from Luke 2, verses 41 to 51. The boy Jesus at the temple. Every year, his parents went to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up to the feast according to the custom. After the feast was over, while Jesus' parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed in Jerusalem, but they were unaware of it. Thinking he was in their company, they travelled on for a day. Then they began looking for him amongst their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting amongst the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Why were you searching for me? He asked. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he was saying to them. Then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart. The 1998 film The Truman Show stars Jim Carrey as a man called Truman Burbank. Truman is the star of his very own TV show and has been since he was born nearly 30 years ago. Truman lives in the almost perfect American town of Sea Haven, but whilst everyone knows that Truman is the lead role in the show, he himself is totally unaware. 
Truman thinks his life is normal, but in reality, his entire life is a fabrication. Sea Haven is in fact a giant stage set. Even the weather is controlled. And all the people he knows are actors. His friendly neighbors, the guy that sells him the newspaper, his best friend Marlon, even his wife who crosses her fingers on their wedding day and never misses an opportunity for product placement. The show is a global phenomenon. Millions of viewers around the world tuning in to see this normal life of Truman every day. But this utopian drama begins to unravel when Truman begins to question his identity. This is brought on initially by strange things happening. A stage light crashes to the ground outside his house. He gets caught in a rain shower, which seems to just rain on the spot where he is. And so Truman begins to question the limits of his world. He wants to get away, to have an adventure, to explore. He starts to question his very existence. Maybe I'm being set up for something, he asks Marlon. You ever think that? Like your whole life has been building towards something? And as Truman becomes increasingly aware and increasingly suspicious, again he confides in his friend. I don't know what to think, Marlon, he says. Maybe I'm losing my mind. It feels like the whole world revolves around me somehow. When I was looking at uh, our passage today, Luke's story of Jesus as a 12-year-old boy, I was reminded of the, of the Truman Show. There are, I think, many parallels between these stories, except the Truman Show is almost like a photographic negative of the story of Jesus, a reversal of Luke's story. Jesus, like Truman, is the centre of the story, the star of the show. But not just this story. Jesus isn't just the centre of Luke's gospel. He is the centre of all the gospels. And not only the gospels, but he is the centre of the entire Bible. He is the star of the show. All of the Bible, the Old Testament and the New Testament, is pointing towards Jesus or reflecting and reacting to Jesus. Everything is about Jesus. And not just this incredible book. In fact, the whole story of creation, the entire story of humanity, all of history, Jesus is at the very centre. He is the star of the show. The difference, of course, between Jesus and Truman is that Jesus is fully, totally aware. Unlike in the Truman show, in the story of Jesus, the supporting actors are, if you like, unaware of the ultimate reality of who Jesus is, at least in part. By the way, just as an aside, let's put away any misunderstanding that this story is about parental neglect or youthful disobedience. There are plenty of cultural contexts where you can read about in the books which tell us that isn't what this story is about. This story is about Jesus and about what Jesus reveals. Now, the first group of supporting actors to Jesus are the teachers in the temple courts. These courts in Jerusalem were famous across Judea as places of learning. And because it was Passover, many of the greatest rabbis from around the country would have come in to think and to teach, to argue and wrestle with God's word, with God's truth, to look at the scriptures together. Of course, they would have also all been expecting a Messiah, so this would have been discussed at great length. Now, it wouldn't have been unusual for students to gather at the feet of these rabbis, to listen, to ask questions. But this student, this 12-year-old boy, was something else. He was asking probing questions and giving answers. And we read that everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. As one writer explains it, this must mean, this must relate to Jesus deducing things from scripture which they had never found before. These great minds had never come across 
this understanding that Jesus, this 12 year old boy brought. But did they realize who was sat there in front of them? Did they realize the true identity of this boy? Did they see that the longed for Messiah was right there? At this point, I've imagined Jesus having a bit of fun with the teachers um, just to himself. I imagine him hearing them talking about the story of creation in Genesis and quietly thinking to himself, yeah, been there, done that. Or maybe asking them with a bit of cheekiness to, to remind him of where the Messiah would be born, which town he would come from. And then again, when they reveal Bethlehem, saying to himself, where was it my mum said that I was born again? The second group of actors are his parents, Mary and Joseph. Now they had some understanding, especially Mary, of Jesus's identity, but even they don't fully grasp it. They too, verse 48, are astonished when they see him in the temple, engaging with these teachers. And with a strong mix of relief at having found him and anger that he hadn't gone with them, she gives Jesus a telling off. Why have you treated us like this? And Jesus's response to Mary is a statement of amazing revelation. Why were you searching for me? He replies, didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? This is a moment of great revelation. It is a re revelation of who Jesus is and that he knows who he is. And it is also a great revelation of what his calling is and that he knows what his calling is. Truman in his ignorance, asks if he's being set up for something, if his life is building towards something, as if the whole world somehow revolves around him. Jesus knows. Unlike Truman, Jesus knows exactly that he is here for a reason, that his life is building towards something, that the whole world does actually indeed, yes, revolve around him. This is the focal point of the beginning of Luke's gospel. Up until now, Luke has told us what other people have said about Jesus, but here we hear the first recorded words of Jesus and he reveals what he knows about himself. Firstly, Jesus refers to God as his father. This reveals his understanding. He is the son of God exclusively, uniquely. He is different from and deeper than anything that had ever been known before, as one writer put it. He is so sure of this identity. Why were you looking for me? Isn't it obvious I would be here? It made perfect sense to Jesus to be with his father. Secondly, it is a revelation of his calling. In my father's house can be translated as about my father's business. In other words, Jesus knows that he has a personal duty to his father in heaven. He has a sense of obligation. I must be, I had to be, or as some translations put it, it is necessary that. Where the father is, that is where Jesus will be. And what is the father's business? The father's business, the father's work is the work of salvation. So that is the work of the son. I wonder what role you play in this drama. Perhaps you're like Mary and Joseph. Perhaps you know who Jesus is. You know his true identity. In the past, you had a revelation of his truth. But maybe somehow you feel that he isn't as real to you as he once was. He isn't as close to you as he once was. He's not as present with you as he once was. Perhaps to some degree you feel you have lost Jesus. Maybe through circumstances, maybe through your own neglect, maybe through messing up, or maybe through bereavement or illness of, or, or fear, maybe simply the current experience of isolation, of lockdown, of restriction has caused you to feel that Jesus isn't to be found in the same way that he once was. To be honest, I reckon all of us who've known Jesus 
sometimes feel like that to some degree. Or perhaps the role you play in the drama is the role of the teachers in the temple courts. Perhaps you've not yet found Jesus. Perhaps you are waiting for God to reveal himself, for the rescuer to come. And maybe you've heard something about this Jesus character, which has intrigued you, which has captured you. Perhaps you've been astonished or amazed at something you've heard Jesus has said or something you've heard Jesus has done. And now you're looking for him. I think we are all looking for Jesus. In The Truman Show, Christoph, the show's creator and mastermind, defends himself against accusations that Truman has been the victim of a massive lie. And he says this, if Truman was absolutely determined to discover the truth, there's no way we could prevent him. The Bible says something similar, not quite in the same words. Matthew 7, 7, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. If you are absolutely determined to find Jesus, to find the truth that he reveals, there is no way anything can prevent you. So how do we find Jesus? He's not in the temple courts. How do we find Jesus? I'd like to suggest several ways we can find Jesus. First of all, Jesus is revealed through creation. We find Jesus through the world that he created. As you go out each day to your daily exercise, take time to look up, to reflect, to enjoy, to ask Jesus to reveal himself again through that which has been made by the Creator. Romans 1 teaches us that God's invisible qualities are revealed through what has been made. Secondly, Jesus is revealed through his people, what we call his body or the church, his hands and feet on earth. We see Jesus in people's faces, in the words and prayers and actions of others who have found Jesus for themselves. And perhaps remarkably, we also see Jesus revealed through those who don't yet know him themselves, significantly through the poor. Again, the Bible teaches us that when we feed the hungry, when we give the thirsty something to drink, when we welcome the stranger, clothe the unclothed, look after, after the sick, visit the prisoner, we encounter Jesus and he reveals himself to us. Thirdly, Jesus is revealed when we share bread and wine together, the symbols of his body and blood on the cross for us. When we share those things, Jesus is revealed. Perhaps for me, one of the hardest things about not meeting together in person in the church is that we're unable to stand in the community, the body of believers, and share in this way. But what we can all do every day is continue to be filled with his Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit whose job is to reveal Jesus to us and lead us into the truth. And every day we can open our hands in a posture of openness and pray the church's ancient prayer, come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit. Jesus will be revealed to us when we invite the Holy Spirit into our lives every day. And finally, this story reminds us that one of the simplest ways of finding Jesus is through scripture. The story which from beginning to end is a revelation of Jesus. Just as Jesus wanted nothing more than to learn and wrestle and discuss and question and grow through studying at the feet of these rabbis, of these teachers in the temple courts, let's commit again to read the Bible, to study it, to wrestle with it, to question and debate and think and reflect, to argue about it, to go deeper and deeper and deeper into this incredible book. 
and there in the midst of its pages to find once again Jesus. Truman in the movie, when he finally finds out the truth, says to his creator, was nothing real? You were real, replies Christoph. It's what made you so good to watch. As we search for Jesus, the only real true man, let's once again be amazed and astonished at how good Jesus is.
Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside. So hasn't it been good that we could all gather together this morning? And if you're new and that perhaps it's your first time that you've joined us or if you're new to the area, we would love to get to know you. Please um, get contact us through the website. Um, Mark mentioned in his talk about Alpha, which has started, but if you haven't signed up and you would still like to join, you are so welcome and you can do that again through the website. We're just going to see a short promo now on Alpha. Hello everyone, this month we have an exciting opportunity to run the Alpha course online with churches together across Pool. Alpha is an amazing opportunity to ask questions about faith and purpose and meaning and we'll watch some videos together on Zoom and then go into breakout rooms where we can discuss everything that you've been thinking. So if you'd like some more information on this, do email info at poolalpha.co.uk and we'll be starting on Monday the 25th of January at 7.30pm. So do sign up, do spread the word, do tell your friends and neighbours too. It'll be great to see you there. And a final prayer blessing. So now may the master take you by his hand and lead you down the path of God's love and Christ's perseverance and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and with all whom you love through this time and forevermore. Amen.